The topic is uh, cell communication or how cells signal uh, to each other. It can be local signaling uh, or long distance signaling. The local, when the cells are so close together that they can communicate uh, through cell junctions, it will be the juxtacrine uh, communication through gap ju junctions in animal cells or through plasmodesmata in animal cells. When the cell wall and the cell membrane uh, let the cytosol communicate with the two cells. The other local uh, uh, cell communication is the paracrine signaling. Paracrine means uh, in the closeness we have a signaling cell with red vesicles in the cyto Plasm. The vesicles contain the signals, uh, the signaling uh, molecules, and they are released through exocytosis, and they are going to target or communicate with target cells. Example for that, the cytokines uh, in inflammation in the body, the white blood cells and the macrophages are communicating with other uh, immune uh, cells in our body. The last local uh, is the synaptic signaling when we have an axon te terminal and a target cell. The target cell can be a muscle cell or a gland that the uh, neuron tells uh, what to do for that target cell. We have vesicles and in the axon terminal that contains the neurotransmitters through a tiny gap Oh, we have receptors on the target cell and the tiny gap is synaptic cleft and the neurotransmitters will go through the synaptic cleft and bind to the receptors and make the target cell uh, do something. The long distance um, signaling is, uh, called the, is called the endocrine signaling that happens with the hormones. This is all about the endocrine system. We have, for example, the pancreas and it contains the Langerhans island uh, islets that they contain not only the beta cells but be, we are focusing the beta cells that they produce the insulin and the insulin is going to be secreted into the vessels and will be carried all around in the body. These signaling uh, molecules will bind to specific cells that they have receptors for that uh, exact signaling molecule. So also uh, the glucagon, serotonin, sex hormones and the thyroxine is also acts like long distance uh, cell communication. So cell signaling, it contains uh, three steps, the reception, the transduction, and the response from the target cell. Here is going, uh, here is the target cell. It has the double uh, phospholipid bilayer all around and the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic tail now inside and embedded in the phospholipid bilayer is the um, recept uh, the protein that contains a receptor or a binding. This is the receptor, and it's going to have a binding site specific for the signaling molecule. So the signaling molecule is a kind of a circle and it's going to fit into the binding side of the receptor. It's called the ligand or ligand uh, signaling molecule uh, equals to the ligand. It's binding and the shape and the binding will cause a receptor change and the receptor change is going to facilitate the 
transduction and eventually the response. So focus on the reception, the first step. Uh, it can go through G protein coupled receptor. The receptor can be coupled up with a specific protein and it's called the G protein. So we will have the cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer. And we have the receptor. It's going to be the specific G protein coupled receptor. And uh, it has a, a receptor at the top that the ligand will bind to it. Attached to the receptor is the G protein or coupled with the G protein. The G protein is also uh, attached to the GA molecule called the GTP. It's kind of ATP, but it's GTP. And it's inactive. The G protein is inactive at that point. When the binding happens, the binding will change the formation of the G protein and the GTP is going to dissociate from it. So the G protein is going to be activated and going to move to another protein, the adenylyl. Did I, did I say that? Okay, not yet. It will be adenylyl cyclase. And when the G protein binds to the adenylyl cyclase, it's going to activate that cyclase enzyme. And we will see what will happen later on. So it works like the epinephrine, neurotransmitters, embryonic development, smell, taste, cholera, botulism, all is going through the G protein coupled reception, uh, receptor way. The other type is the ligand gated ion channel. So we have an ion channel and the ligand is going to bind to the ion channel and it will act as an opener for the gate. So the phospholipid bilayer, we have the channel protein and this is the receptor site. This is going to be the lig uh, ligand, the signaling protein. When it binds with the receptor site, it's going to open the channel for special ions that they would not be able to go through the phospholipid bilayer, the sodium and the uh, calcium ions, nervous system works like that. And it also can trigger electric signals in the nervous system. This is how the nervous system works. And the last one is intracellular receptors. Now, some uh, ligands or some signaling uh, molecules can go through the cell membrane. Here is the cell, here is the DNA, and comes the ligand. It's a small hydrophobic molecule. It has to be small that it will uh, go through, or it has to be hydrophobic. So in cytoplasm or in the nucleus, that small hydrophobic uh, molecule will turn specific, I mean, eventually it will turn on specific genes. So the receptor protein is in the cytoplasm. It goes in, can pass through the membrane and activates the receptor protein and the receptor protein will act as a transcription factor. The transcription factor will go into the DNA, into the nucleus and activates a specific gene. So I hope it is uh, more or less clear and in class we will clear it up even more.